Hi everyone, today we are going to be looking at the Kenwood K-Mix mixer. So we're just going to do a quick unboxing so you can see how this product is packaged um, and what kind of size it is because actually looking at this box I'm not completely sure it's going to fit in my kitchen. It looks huge um, but we all know that packaging is usually a lot bigger than the product inside so so let's just open it up and have a look what we've got here. Okay, that's interesting. Lovely spatula to do the baking with. Welcome pack and this is telling me that I might need to do a bit of uh, DIY putting things together. Let's have a look. Pop that on the side. Okay. We have the different ends. I'm just going to lift these out and put them on the side. We'll see what's underneath. There we go. Okay, so here is the Kenwood K mixer in cream um, on the sideboard. As you can see, it's a fairly hefty piece of equipment. Um, but not as big as the packaging, which is quite a relief. So um, I've had a quick look at the instructions, which really handy. They all came in this lovely little envelope here. Um, and admittedly, I'm not really one for reading instructions. I love it when I can open a product and I know exactly what to do or I can just figure it out. This wasn't one of those. Um, I felt like I needed a review if, to watch a review that somebody else had done. Um, to know what I was doing, but I didn't. I've, I've read the instructions, so I'm going to talk you through how you use this one now. Um, and I was quite relieved to find out that this spanner was not needed to put any of this together. Um, it's actually for this um, soft spatula here, flexible beater, um, which is for mixing soft ingredients. Um, and this insert here just shows you um, that it's used for removing the flexible bit and, and putting it back on so that you can clean it effectively. Um, but the spanner is also there uh, for troubleshooting if you have any issues with any of the other beaters where the nuts and bolts need to be tightened. Um, but in, in terms of just standard use, you shouldn't need to use this unless you're you know, taking this off to clean. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put that to the side for a minute and I'm going to show you how we raise the head of the mixer. So there's a little switch at the back here, which you basically lift up, and at the same time as lifting it up, you raise the head until it doesn't go any further back and you can tell it's locked into position. Um, and then you can choose which beater you would like to use. So you've got different mixing tools here. You've got the K beater, which is for making cakes, biscuits, pastry, icing, fillings, eclairs and mashed potato. Um, you've got the whisk, lovely whisk here, uh, which is for eggs, cream, batters, fatless sponges, meringues, cheesecakes, mousse, souffles. And it says here, don't use the whisk for heavy mixtures, for example, creaming fat and sugar as you could damage it. Um, it is quite, you know, flexible. I can understand why they would say that. And the dough hook here, which is for yeast mixtures. So I'm going to show you how to put one of these in. So I'm going to go with the with the um, the K beater here. So named, I presume, because it has a K in the middle, which is nice <laughs> for the K mix. Um, so you basically you, you see these two prongs here. If you have a look underneath, I'll I'll put a still photo in here. You fix it in until it doesn't go any further and then turn it and I can tell that that's locked into position and similarly if you want to take it out you just turn it and then pull it back out so really easy in and out for these um, so I'm just going to put this back in so I can do a demonstration so in push it in until it doesn't go any further and I'm going to turn it okay and then I'm going to very carefully fit the bowl so um, on the bowl here, there is, on the base, sorry, there's an unlocked picture and a locked picture. Um, and you line the handle up with it. So it's going in unlocked. So I'm just going to carefully 
place it under here, unlocked, and I can feel that that slots in straight away. And then you turn the handle until the handle is in line with the picture of the lock. So I'm gonna put a, a still photo in here as well, just to show you. And there we go, so the base is on. Um, and it's you know it's a really good size base here and you've got all of the measurements on the side you've got mills on this side and cups and fluid ounces on this side and the same as before to put this down this is locked at the moment so you need to hold this button up whilst carefully placing it back down release the button and that is now in place um, so now that's ready to go, I'm going to switch the power on here. Okay, so the power is now on, as you can see with the light here. Um, and there are six different speed settings. So I'm just going to take you through the speed settings now so you can see how fast they go. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. also a fold um, option here so for the normal speed settings you turn it clockwise if you turn it anti-clockwise um, it has a constant slow speed which is for folding light ingredients into heavy, heavier mixture so I'll just turn that on now to demonstrate <laughs> Um, now you can tell that that is it is quite noisy. Um, although my toddler is asleep next door, and fingers crossed he hasn't woken up. Um, I'm just going to go and check. Okay, toddler's still asleep. Um, so there is one thing I didn't mention before that also comes with this product, which is a splash guard. So I'm just going to turn this off first of all, um, and I'm going to read the instructions as I do this. So you can see me doing this in real time, um, just to find out how easy it is to actually fit the splash guard. So um, I'm going to raise the head here. Um, until it locks, it's locked there. And it says in the instructions, fit the bowl onto the base. Well, the bowl is already on the base. So I'm just going to remove the tool here very carefully. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna show you the splash guard here as a, as a better demonstration. So there's two little, little grooves that stick out here and, and um, a bit that goes in here. Um, and the grooves fit into these on either side and then there's a dip there. So you basically just push it on into that section there. It still seems quite wobbly to me. I don't think that's as secure as I would have wanted it to be, um, but it, this is, seems to be how it's supposed to be. So then you fit your mixer onto the end, your beater, and it's on. We'll slowly lower it down and the splash guard is in place. Um, now, the splash guard doesn't look as secure as I would want it to be, really. Um, there's, there's a bit of a gap on this side, it, it goes over more on this side, although I suppose it is just um, for splashes, uh, not, um, not like an actual blender. Obviously you've got the lip on the bowl there anyway, so it's not going to stop everything coming out. So I guess how secure does it need to be, really? But there we go.